2 Samuel chapter 1, David mourned Saul and Jonathan. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, that David stayed two days in Ziklag. On the third day, behold, a man came from Saul's camp, with his clothes torn and dust on his head. Now when he approached David, he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. Then David asked him, Where are you coming from? I've escaped from the camp of Israel, he answered. Well, how did things go? David asked him. Please tell me. He answered, The troops fled the battlefield. Also many of the troops fell and died, and even Saul and his son Jonathan are dead. David asked the young man, informing him, How do you know that Saul and his son are Jonathan are dead? The young man informed him, informing him, answered, I happened by chance to be on Mount Gilboa, and look, Saul was leaning on his spear, while the chariots and the horsemen were closing in on him. When he turned around and saw me, he called me, so I answered, Here I am. Then he asked me, Who are you? So I answered him, I am an Amalekite. So he said to me, Stand now over me and kill me, for I am in agony, yet I am still alive. So I stood over him and killed him, because I knew he couldn't survive after he had fallen. Then I took the crown that was on his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and brought them here to my Lord. Then David took off his clothes and tore them. And so did all the men that were with him, and they mourned, wept, and fasted until evening for Saul and his son Jonathan, for the troops of Adonai, and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. Then David said to the young man who informed him, Well, where are you from? I am the son of an Amalekite outsider, he said, replied. And David said to him, How is it that you were not afraid to stretch out your hand to destroy Adonai's anointed one? Then David called to one of the young men and said, Come, strike him down. And he struck him down, and he died. David said to him, Your blood is on your own head, for your mouth testified against you, saying, I killed Adonai's anointed. Then David chanted this lament over Saul and his son Jonathan in order that the son of Judah he taught the song of the bow, or the song of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jashar, Your glory, O Israel, is slain in your high places. How the mighty have fallen! Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in Ashkelon streets. Let Philistine daughters rejoice, let lest the daughters of the uncircumcised gloat. Hills of Geboa, let no doer reign beyond you, nor the bountiful fields, for their shield of the mighty ones lay defiled. Saul's shield will no longer be anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, Jonathan's bow never turned back. Saul's word never returned empty, sores never returned empty. Saul and Jonathan loved and delightful partly parted neither in life nor death. They were swifter than eagles, stronger than lions. Daughters of Israel weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet and finery, who put ornaments of gold in your clothes. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of battle. Jonathan on your heights is slain. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasing were you to me. Wonderful was your love to me, more than the love of women. How the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war destroyed. Chapter 2. Judah anoints King David. Now it came to pass that this, after this that David inquired of Adonai, saying, Should I go up to one of the towns of Judah? Adonai said to him, Go up. Where shall I go up? David asked. To Hebron, he said. So David went up there, along with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite. David also brought up his men that were with him, each with his household, and they settled in the towns of Hebron. And the men of Judah came there and anointed King David over the house of Judah. They told David, saying, It was the men of Jabesh Gilead who buried Saul. So David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh Gilead and said to them, Blessed are you of Adonai for showing this kindness to Saul your lord for burying him. So now may Adonai show you the kindness and faithfulness, and I also will show you goodness because you have done this thing. Now therefore be strong and brave, for Saul your lord is dead, and also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. The forces of Abner and Joab battle. Now Abner, son of Ner, Saul's army commander, had taken Saul's son Ishbosheth and brought him over to Mahanaim. Then he made him king over Gilead, Asher, Jezreel, Ephraim, and Benjamin, over all Israel. Saul's son Ishbosheth was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned for two years, but the house of Judah followed David. The time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. When Zabner, son of Ner, and the troops of Saul's son, Ishbosheth, went out from Mahanaim to Gibeah, meanwhile Joab, son of Jeruiah, and the troops of David went out. They met each other by the pool of Gibeon, so they sat down, one group on one side of the pool and the other on the other side of the pool. Then Abner said to Joab, Now let us young men go up and complete, compete before us. Let them get up, Joab replied. Then they got up and came forward by number, twelve for Benjamin and Saul's son Ishbosheth, and twelve from David's servants. Then each grasped his opponent by the head and thrust his sword in his opponent's side, so they fell down together. Therefore that place was called Helkath Hazarum which is in Gibeah. The battle was very fierce that day, and Abner and the men of Israel were defeated before David's servants. Now the three sons of Jeruiah were Joab, Abishai, and Asahel. 
Asahel was as swift-footed as the one gazelles in the field. Asahel pursued Abner, not swerving to the right or to the left from pursuing Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and asked, Is it you, Asahel? It is I, he answered. So Abner said to him, Turn away to your right or to your left. Seize one of the young men and take his armor for yourself. But Asahel would not turn away from following him. Once again, Abner warned Asahel, Turn away from pursuing me. What should I strike you to the ground? Why should I strike you to the ground? How would I ever look your brother Joab in the face? But he refused to turn aside, so Abner struck him with the butt end of the spear in the groin. So that spear came out through his back, and he fell down there and died on the spot. When all who came to the place where Asahel had fallen and died, they stood still. But Joab and Abishai continued pursuing Abner. As the sun was setting, they reached the hill of... Amna, which faces Gai, Gia, or Gaia, on the road to the wilderness of Gibeon. The sons of Benjamin rallied to Abner on the top of one of the hills. Then Abner called out to Joab and said, Must the sword devour forever? Don't you realize how bitter it will be in the end? How long until you order the people to stop pursuing their kinsmen? As God lives, Joab replied, If you had not spoken, then surely the people would have gone up until the morning, everyone after his kinsmen. So Joab blew the shofar, and all the soldiers halted and pursued Israel no more, nor did they continue to fight any longer. So Abner and his men marched all the night through Arba, and they crossed over the Jordan and marched through all the morning until they reached Mahanaim. Joab returned from the pursuing Abner, and when he had gathered all the troops, 19 of David's soldiers besides Asahel were missing. But David's soldiers had struck down many of Benjamin and Abner's men, so that 360 men died. Then they took up Asahel and buried him in his father's tomb, which is in Bethlehem. Joab and his men marched all night until the day dawned on them at Hebron. Second Samuel chapter 3, The Betrayal of Abner. Now the war between the house of Saul and the house of David lasted a long time. While David grew steadily stronger, the house of Saul grew steadily weaker. Sons were born to David in Hebron. His firstborn was Ammon by Ahinoam of Jezreel. His second was Chilia by Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. The third was Absalom, son of Maacha, daughter of King Talmai of Geshur. The fourth was Adonijah, Adonijah son of Haggith. The fifth was Shephatiah, son of Abital. And the sixth, Ithream, by David's wife, Egla. These were born to David in Hebron. During the war between the house of Saul and the house of David, Ab Abner, shrink Abner strengthened his position in the house of Saul. Now Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpah, daughter of Aiah, and Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you slept with my father's concubine? But Abner became very angry, angry over Ishbosheth's words. And my dog's head from Judah to this day have been loyal to the house of Saul, your father, to his kinsmen, to his friends. And I have handed you over to David. Yet today you are accusing me of a wrongdoing with this woman. May God do so to Abner and even more. If as Adonai has sworn to David, I don't accomplish this for him. To transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and establish the throne of David over Israel and Judah. From Dan to Beersheba. But Ishbosheth could not respond to Abner in other words because he was afraid of him. Then Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf saying whose is the land make your covenant with me and see my hand will be with you to bring all israel over to you good said david i will cut a covenant with you but one thing i require of you you will not see my face until you first bring saul's daughter michael when you come to see my face then david sent messengers to saul's son ishbosheth demanding give me my wife michael whom i betrothed myself for a hundred philistine foreskins so ishbosheth saith sent and took her from her husband, Paltiel, son of Laish, but her husband accompanied her, weeping as he went, and followed her as far as Bahurim. Then Abner said to him, Go, return. So he returned. Now Abner had a word with the elders of Israel, saying, In times past you wanted David to be king over you, so now do it. For Adonai has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will deliver my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines and from the hand of their enemies. Abner also spoke in the hearing of Benjamin, and then Abner went to Hebron to speak of the hearing of David, about all that was agreeable to Israel and to the whole house of Benjamin. When Abner came to David in Hebron, along with twenty other men, David had a banquet for Abner and the men with him. Abner said to David, Let me Get up and go rally all Israel to my lord the king, so that they may come to covenant with you, and you may reign over all that your soul desires. So David sent Abner away, and he departed in Shalom. Just as David's shoulders and Joab came from a raid, bringing with them much spoil, by then Abner was no longer with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away and departed in Shalom. When Joab and all the soldiers arrived with him, they told Joab, saying, Abner, son of Ner, came to the king, and he has sent him away, and he has gone in Shalom. Then Joab came to the king and said, What have you done? Look here, Abner came to you. Why did you send him away? Now he is getting away. You know Abner, son of Ner. Surely he came to deceive you, to spy on your goings and comings, and to find out all that you were doing. When Joab left David, he sent messengers after Abner. So they brought him back from the well of Syrah. 
though David knew nothing about it. Now when Abner returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside within the gate to speak with him privately, and there stabbed him in the groin, so that he died on account of the blood of his brother Asael. Asahel. When David heard about it afterward, he said, I and my kingdom are innocent before Adonai forever from the blood of Abner, son of Ner. May it whirl in Joab's head and on his father's house. May the house of Joab never be without someone with a discharge or tazaret, lame or fallen by the sword or the one who lacks food. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, killed Abner because he had killed their brother Asahel at Gibeon in battle. Then David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, rend your clothes gird with sackcloth. And lament before Abner. King David walked behind the platform. When they buried Abner in Hebron, the king lifted up his voice and wept aloud at Abner's grave, and all the people wept. Then the king chanted a lament for Abner and said, Should Abner die like a senseless fool? Your hands were not bound, your feet were not put in fetters. As one falls before the children of iniquity, so did you fall. Then all the people wept again over him. Then all the people came to urge David to eat some food while it was still day. But David vowed, saying, May God do so to me, and even more, if I taste food or anything else before the sun sets. All the people took note of it and pleased them. And it pleased them, just as everything the king did pleased all the people. So all the people and all Israel understood the day that it was not the king's will to kill Abner, son of Ner. Then the king said to the soldiers, Don't you realize that a prince and a great man has fallen in Israel today? So today I am vulnerable, even though anointed king, these men, the sons of Zariah, are hard for me to handle are too hard for me to handle. May Adonai reward the evildoer according to his wickedness.